Let's take a look at the derivation of the advection dispersion equation uh, from the first principle um, conservation equation that we've been starting with for the course. So this is familiar. This is where we start with all the, uh, the analysis. And uh, the dependent variable will be um, the mass of the solute per um, volume of the control volume. Uh, and so st the storage term is just going to be the capital C DT. Um, that's that's the easy one. Uh, advective flux. Uh, this is going to be the product of the flow rate or the volumetric flux times the concentration. And for this uh, diffusive diffusive term, uh, we'll have now both diffusion here from Fick's law and the dispersive flux that we saw um, on a previous uh, previous uh, slide that is uh, just going to give us a similar form to the fixed law. Uh, but this term here is the mechanical dispersion. And this is the molecular diffusivity. So uh, for now, we'll have the source be equal to 0. And taking these terms here and substituting them in here and ultimately in there gives us the governing equation here for advection and dispersion. And what we have is that the, uh, the we've got del dot and then this thing here. This is the diffusion term um, where what we recognize is that these two are the same. So we factor out the gradient of the concentration and we add the molecular diffusion and the um, mechanical dispersion. So this is all from uh, del dot diffus diffusive flux, where we have diffusion and dispersion combined. And then we have del dot advective flux. So this left-hand side that I'm looking at is resulting from uh, this term here. And so here, this is del dot. And that's the advective flux. And then the concentration change. This is the rate of change of mass stored uh, within the control volume. And that's just this term. And we set this, the uh, sources equal to 0. Okay, So there's the governing equation using this approach. Uh, what we see, what, what, what often you see is that this is uh, simplified somewhat. Uh, we can combine these two terms into uh, what I'll just call D here for simplicity. And it's uh, sometimes called the hydrodynamic dispersion. And it's just the sum of the molecular and mechanical uh, terms. And so that's given here, where uh, it's just this term. And instead of that guy there, we just make it a capital D. And we shuffle it around a little bit so that we, um, we well, this this term goes over on the other side, and then uh, we change the, the signs. And so that's what we get. Um, and uh, this can be simplified further, where uh, if, the, if, if D is um, uniform, if it's homogeneous, then the D comes out of here, out of this uh, divergence operator. And you have uh, del dot del C. And that's just uh, the second, uh, the Laplacian of C. OK, so this term becomes that term if it's uh, homogeneous. And this term, we can, we can think of this as the, as the product rule, where we've got del dot Q times C, the C comes out, plus uh, del dot C, and the Q comes out. OK, and so the, the term that I said first is del dot q. That's the divergence of the flux. And if we say that the, the flow is divergence free, then the divergence of the flux is equal to 0. And we just we get this version of it. OK, so this is for homogeneous uh, material, and the flux is divergence free. So this is a, a common form that, that you often see.
Okay, so here's the governing equation, and to solve this we need boundary conditions, and there are several kinds that we'll use. One is to specify the concentration on the boundaries, and then we can uh, specify either the diffusive flux or the advective flux. Um, and we can also uh, specify a case where the flux is proportional to the gradient. Now these are fairly straightforward. Um, but one thing though that I would point out is this case here where we specify the diffusive flux equal to zero. Um, this is often used as the boundary condition on the boundary where uh, mass is advected out of the region. Okay, this is called out, an outflow boundary condition in COMSOL and the condition that's used is that the diffusive flux is equal to zero. The advective flux is not going to be equal to zero, not necessarily anyway, um, and so that's the way, that's a way to let the, the mass come out of the region by advection. Okay, so keep that in mind. If there's no mass at all, well, or no mass being advected, then you can use this uh, condition, or there, you can also say that there's uh, the, the total flux is equal to zero. So, um, what we've got here, though, is this is another this is a governing equation, and in order to solve this, we need to know what Q is. And recall, we've solved for Q before, and in order to do that, we had a, a governing equation that was the conservation of, um, of mass of the water um, and a conservation of momentum uh, in the flow. So two other conservation equations that we solved to get Q, and then we've got this one uh, that we solved to, to get the concentrations. Okay, uh, so we have to keep that in mind, and for many of these problems, at least the simple ones, we'll solve the flow uh, problem, and so we'll know what this is ahead of time, and we'll use that flow in this analysis. Okay, so we'll assume that's known and that it doesn't change. That makes our life simple, we'll kind of solve it in steps. Um, this we can think of as a one-way coupling where we solve the Q. It, it, it may be a steady Q, steady volumetric flow rate, or it may vary with time. And then we use those results in the analysis of the concentration. So that's the, the simplest. Well, I, I guess the, the simplest is that, that Q is constant. And then what I have in mind here is that Q is varying with time. Uh, but Q, the flow, is not affected by the concentration. That would happen, for example, if the concentration was really very dilute. But what we have in a lot of interesting cases is that the concentration is not so dilute, that the, that the concentration causes the fluid density to increase enough so that that affects the flow. And if that happens, then we have the, the flow affecting the concentration right here but the concentration also affects the flow. And so if that's the case, then we have to solve all three governing equations at the same time. The way that's implemented is that we have the flow problem that's, the, that, that's a combination of mass and momentum uh, for the fluid, uh, that's solved. And then uh, this problem here is also solved. So there, there, there are two problems, three governing equations, uh, that are solved when we have coupling. I mean, an example of this would be for uh, groundwater that flows, uh, that where you have some fresh water and then maybe some salt water. And the salt water, like the salinity that's in the ocean, that's got a high enough concentration so that it will sink through fresh water and the density that results from the concentration will affect the flow. Okay, so. Uh, in order to do this, we need to be able to, uh, in order to solve the equations, we need to be able to characterize the mechanical um, dispersion. And uh, here's the way that that works. Um, we, we saw earlier that the mechanical dispersion is going to be proportional to the velocity and to a length scale, so the magnitude of the velocity. And the way that that is going to 
shake out here is that in 2D, the dispersion is going to be a tensor. So the dispersion is going to be different uh, depending upon what direction you're uh, you're going. And, and I mean, I think that that makes sense because we've seen that that so long as you're going right along with the flow, you have dispersion in a longitudinal sense that goes uh, in the direction of flow and, and transverse dispersion that goes perpendicular to the flow. So you end up with a dispersion tensor and these are the individual terms uh, in the tensor. The quantity, these are the velocities here, that's the velocity in the x direction and the y direction. Uh, and then that's just the magnitude of the velocity vector. Um, and so the, the new parameter that's introduced here is this alpha L and alpha T. And they are uh, given here. Alpha L is the longitudinal dispersivity. It has units of length and transverse dispersivity. It also has units of, of length. So we saw that the mechanical dispersion uh, it's going to be proportional to the velocity and this uh, characteristic length. And so for porous media, that characteristic length is this uh, dispersivity term. So it shows up right there. And, and the way we get it proportional to just the velocity, that's, uh, that's here. There's a velocity squared, but that's also uh, velocity. So uh, that's how we get the, the right units. Okay, so th this is the dispersion tensor uh, in 2D, and we can implement that to do the, the analysis. It's, it's uh, implemented in the, the COMSOL analysis that we'll be using. So um, what I want to do is show you a simplified version of this where we have a plume uh, just in 1D flow. So here's the flow, uh, and we, have, we put a constant head here, a constant head here, and we cause the flow to just move uh, in this direction. And right there, there's a little circular region that is held at uh, a higher concentration. The flow goes through that and uh, picks up the concentration and uh, then it forms this plume. And you can see the effect of dispersion as this plume uh, spreads. So uh, we want to take a look at how the governing equations are set up for this fairly simplified case.